Hey everybody, welcome to the first standalone hat and time modding tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over a object type in Kismet known as object lists. Now first, let me let me paint a scenario for you because in order to understand what an object list is, we need to understand what it's useful for first. Over here, we have a burger. We're going to turn this into a mover so that we can interact with it in Kismet. Now, as you know, burgers are mega cringe. Now, I want to make a button that when I press this button, it destroys this burger because of how cringe it is. So what we're going to do is, with it selected, we're going to create a, a new event using the button on interaction. This will basically make it so that whenever we interact with the button by stepping on it, it'll activate an event. So we'll go actor destroy. We'll grab the burger, put it in as an object, and then tie it into the destroy. Now when we step on this button, boom, burger gone. Now let's say we want two burgers, right? Well, we can just connect another one. And now, boom, it'll get rid of two of them. But what if we have, like, a lot of burgers. Like, a lot, a lot of burgers. Now, I could just select each of them individually. And then put them in like this. And then, you know, drag each individual. Like, that would work. However, this is... This is a pain. And if you need to select... If you need to affect something in Kismet... And you have, like, say, maybe a hundred or so items, this is going to get really unwieldy. Very fast. Luckily, there's an easy solution for this. We go to new variable, object, object list, or if you just go to the uh, new sequence object and just type in object list, you'll get this thing called an object list. And with all of our burgers selected, if we just go to the object list, right click it, and then choose insert selected objects into object list, now we have all of those on a single object. So when we go in, you'll see this affects all of the burgers with only one object, and that keeps it very clean. The, when you get into a kismet that involves a high amount of objects, this becomes really important. However, that's not the only thing that you can use object lists for. Say we don't want a billion burgers. Say we want one burger, and then when you step on the, the switch, it destroys the burger, right? But well, since we only have one burger to destroy, that's pretty easy. But what if we want to destroy this burger from multiple places? So, we make three buttons. We grab one, you know, new event on interaction, tie that into there. New event on interaction, tie into there. Now imagine you do this with like 30 of them. Imagine you have 30 buttons in your level and you need to tie them all into this event. That's just not gonna fly. That's just gonna be way too much bloat in your kismet that you just don't need. Luckily, there's actually a really cool thing that I learned a, a while back that you can do. So, first of all, we're gonna delete this. We're gonna go to New Sequence Object and type in On Interaction. That's, you can also go into New Event actor on interaction. Now this is not specifying a specific thing, so it won't actually trigger. But what we can do now is we can grab the attach to event thing. Attach to event node, which is under new action event attach to event. What we can do is tie this red node into this event, and then we make we select the three buttons, make an object list, put the buttons instead into the object list, and a tie this. This will make it so that all of those object lists are 
in a list, and then they get tied to this one event that does one thing. This is really useful, for example, say if you have a group of enemies and you want to make something happen every time an enemy dies, you don't want to make an event for every single enemy, that's, a, that's just a pain. So you would use this to attach an entire list of objects to that event. Now in order for this to work, you need to make an event level loaded and tie that into here so that it happens at the, at the beginning of the act. Now. If we go in, you'll see this this button gets rid of it. Then if we go over to this one, this button gets rid of it. You know, all three of them work, just for the sake of clarification or uh, demonstration. Okay, that one didn't work, but I, I think I just forgot to select it. Which actually leads nicely, and I swear this wasn't scripted, but uh, that leads nicely into... Yeah, I only put two objects in this list. It's annoying to go remove all the lists and then redo it, but what you don't actually have to, because if you just right click and do insert into object list, that just adds it to the list. So anytime you add something that you want to add to the list, you can just slap it back into that list and then you don't have to really do anything again. And if there's ever an instance where like, say, you have a bunch of them, you don't know which ones are in the list, um, the best way to do it is to select all of them, just remove all of them from the list and then reinsert them. So that you're that way you don't in, input the same thing twice. With that object list, you know, all that stuff. There is a lot you can do with object lists, and this is mainly just a general overview of what they even do. So there you go. That's how object lists work.